Fedora 15 Lovelock has finally landed and here we are with the final release of uh, Fedora 15. Of course the big news with Fedora 15 is GNOME 3 with GNOME Shell as the default interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a poke around the GNOME 3 interface and I'm going to make a few comments just about uh, the direction that Fedora is going uh, in contrast to the direction that a lot of other distributions are going, namely Ubuntu. So first of all, uh, since I haven't talked about GNOME 3 at all in my reviews, we're going to have a pretty extensive look around GNOME 3 and just the developments that they've made over the last, uh, well, really two, three years that it's been in development. Uh, honestly, my first impressions are very good. I have been trying uh, Fedora 15 and GNOME 3 on and off for uh, since, since the beta. Uh, but here we are with the final, and uh, apart from the improved artwork, which is quite nice, uh, there's, uh, there's been a few tweaks and changes, but uh, honestly, most of it is unchanged. So, first of all, I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, how to access your uh, programs and files in GNOME 3, and of course, it's the Activities button up here, so you can either click it or you can uh, swipe your mouse up to it. Uh, now, first first comment that I make is that if you're a mouse person, this can be quite a long haul for you. So, say if you have an application running, so for this uh, for this example, we'll just get the fire file browser up and going. Uh, so, say you have an application running like Nautilus, and uh, we'll drag it over here into the middle, and then you and then you want to launch something else like. Um, well, let's say you wanted to launch Deja Dupe, which is the backup uh, tool. You have to come up here, and then you have to come over here, Applications, and uh, and then you have to scroll down to uh, to wherever Deja Dupe is, and uh, it'll be around here somewhere, I think. Yep, there it is, and then you have to click that. Now, that can be quite a long haul, especially if you're a mouse person. If you're a keyboard person, uh, your journey is a little bit better. Um, you uh, simply hit the meta key, uh, start typing Deja, and uh, it'll come up with Deja Dupe, and you just press enter, and that's uh, all there is to it. So that, that is very smooth, actually. It's uh, very nice on the keyboard side. On the, on the mouse side, it's a little bit more, uh, you have to cover a bit more room. But, uh, it, you know, that's really only my major gripe with uh, GNOME Shell. Apart from that, it's a very modern desktop experience. This is something very different. They're not copying anyone else. Uh, they're even taking quite a different stance to Unity. This is an entirely new GTK library. This isn't uh, GNOME 2 with another shell stuck on top of it like Unity is. It is GNOME 3, GTK 3. All of the libraries, all of the, uh, the widget sets, everything is new. Uh, with Fedora 15 and uh, and future releases that are going to be based around GNOME 3. Secondly, I want to talk about notification icons. Now, the notification icons have gone through significant rework, uh, and they look extremely nice. Now, if you have a decent graphics card, uh, these will gently fade in and out as you scroll across them. But since I'm running this in VirtualBox, it's uh, it's not the best 3D acceleration. But they all look very nice, very monochrome with a soft glow on them. Uh, which is very nice designer touch and of course you've got a me menu type of thing here uh, which is your uh, login logout type thing now the other the other one that's been uh, the other issue that's been causing some controversy is this uh, this uh, suspend button which can be changed to the power off if you hold down alt and you can see that's what I'm doing now um, so that is a, a slight bit inconvenient but come on who shuts down their computer three times a day anymore uh, except for dual booters like myself. Anyway, uh, moving along, we have the calendar here on top, which again is very, very nice, and you have instant integration into uh, Evolution Mail and Calendar, which is also extremely nice to see. Uh, you can see at a, at a glance what you've got, got going on today, what you've got going on tomorrow. This is a wonderful uh, addition, in my opinion. It looks very nice, very modern, and you can see it's launched the Evolution Setup Assistant. That is simply fantastic. Uh, and then again, back to activities, this is where most of the action is going to happen. So you, so say you want to launch Nautilus, and why don't we launch something else as well? Uh, what's something else we can launch? Ah, uh, what about, okay, calculator, that's nice and easy. So basically your workspace, of course, is your desktop, nothing is new there, but Anytime you want to launch a new application or reorder the uh, reorder your windows as far as workspaces are concerned, you put your mouse back up into the top corner there, and it will drag all your windows uh, into view, 
uh, much like the expose type feature, and then you drag windows into the relevant uh, into the relevant workspace that you want to create. And these workspaces, the way they work, is extremely dynamic. Uh, you have various you can drag around windows inside of these workspaces, but you don't have a set amount. Um, now this this has been quite a bothersome to uh, to some people, but in my opinion, it's a, it's a modern evolution of of workspaces. Workspaces is something that Linux has had for a very long time now, and it's good to see that they're actually doing some uh, doing some innovation on the part of these workspaces. And it, I, in my opinion, it makes it more accessible for new users to understand the the principle and the concept behind workspaces. So um, yeah. Honestly, I think it's a nice touch, but your mileage will vary. Uh, so you can see here that any time you drag a window into a new desktop, it, uh, it, uh, it will either create or delete a, uh, a desktop based on what exactly you've been doing. So you can see I had an empty desktop up the top here before, and I'll repeat the process, drag ca calculator down from the top here all the way down to the bottom, and uh, it deletes this top one and plops a new one in underneath. And you can see here that I've got Calculator uh, presented on this desktop that I'm now on. Uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, for switching desktops still work. So you can still switch your desktops around using your keyboard shortcuts like you did with GNOME 2.x. But uh, it's, yeah, in my opinion, it's a very nice evolution of the workspace experience. Definitely something you need to get used to if you're going to use GNOME 3, as it is an integral part of the desktop experience. Um, but that's all I've really got to say on that. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice addition, in my opinion. Once you get used to it, once you get your head around the workflow involved, I think you'll be fine. Uh, so, secondly, along the side here, we have the launcher, and basically, this is just like any other dock. Uh, you launch, uh, you pin commonly used applications to that dock, and of course, then you can launch them from uh, as soon as you swipe your mouse up into the corner. So let's. For instance, drag uh, gedit onto the dock, and you can see here that it's very easy to drag and drop applications. Uh, so I, I can simply drag that on there, and now I've got that to launch uh, when you uh, when you want. Secondly, um, notifications in GNOME 3 are very very fancy indeed. If you notice, when I dropped that uh, when I dropped gedit onto the launcher, it actually came up with a notification down the bottom saying it has been added to your launcher. So if I pick up if I pick up Solitaire. Uh, so we'll drag it over. Uh, we'll drag it over to the favorites, to the panel. And if you look down the bottom, then you can see the solitaire has been added to your favorites, and it swipes up here with a lovely, uh, with a lovely notification. And the same goes for instant messaging, for email. The desktop experience is very integrated, especially with GTK apps. Uh, support for KDE and Qt apps is yet to be there, but I'm sure eventually it will be. Uh, so they've done a great job with uh, with the um, notification integration into the desktop. I know that sounds extremely wordy. Uh, so secondly, I'll, let's just take a quick peek at the applications. This is something at GNOME 3 Shines. Uh, the application peek that you can get here is just a quick sweeping glance at what you've got installed. Uh, again, this is fantastic for a touch screen a, a experience, much better uh, than Unity in my opinion as far as a touch screen experience goes. Uh, this would look simply uh, simply dashing on a tablet, and you can see here that we've got very nice categorization on the side here, and uh, and that is something that Unity badly needs, as uh, the categorization in Unity is quite dodgy to say the least, uh, unless you're launching things from uh, from the side launcher all the time. So you can see here that everything is sorted out quite nicely, and I can just quickly skim through and see what apps I have installed. So that's that's very very handy. As far as Fedora as a distribution goes. It's basically just very core basic GNOME. Uh, we just get a lot of the GNOME tools, a lot of the GNOME accessories, a few GNOME games, uh, all the GNOME, all the GNOME graphics utilities, uh, shot well as well uh, with the latest version of that, so that's good to see. Internet, we get Firefox 4 of course, and uh, the other GNOME tools, transmission and empathy, uh, filling in the spaces for peer-to-peer uh, for, uh, -peer and uh, for instant messaging. Which again, as I said, MP3 uh, empathy has uh, brilliant uh, integration into the desktop. Office, you don't get anything at all except for evolution, which again ties into your calendar up top here. Uh, and sound and video, you get a fair bit. You get an audio CD extractor, you get Cheese Movie Player, and Rhythm Box. So that's nothing really to write home about. 
Uh, and of course Fedora is only about a 500 meg download so it's really quite a minimal download considering uh, the, uh, the very modern experience that you get. Uh, so here in the system tools we've just got uh, you know your add and remove software, bug reporting, deja dupe, you can see what it is, it's very easy to see. Uh, <laughs> quite honestly in the future it's going to be very easy for GNOME 3 desktops uh, for people like myself to review. I don't have to zoom in for you to see what the applications are, you can see the icons, they're nice and big and colourful, so that's very nice. Uh, add and remove software is just the standard uh, GNOME uh, package management. Again, nothing fancy, uh, everybody's seen this before, this has been around for eons. Uh, there have been rumblings of, uh, there have been rumblings of a unified software manager in the, in the look of Ubuntu Software Center, but we are yet to see that, and uh, when that happens then that will be great news. So, you can see here I'm just rolling around desktops and I can launch, uh, I can uh, search and launch, or I can just click and launch. Uh, quite honestly, I've gotten used to this uh, this way of working uh, in the couple of weeks that I was running Fedora 15, the beta, and uh, the only reason I stopped running it was because of screencasting issues and, uh, and the like, but uh, honestly, I'd be happy to run GNOME 3 as an everyday system. Uh, I don't really have any qualms with it at all. I prefer it to uh, Ubuntu Unity at this point, uh, mainly because of expandability. And let me, uh, let me expand on said topic. So first of all, to launch system settings, you can go up to your menu here and click on system settings. It's not that difficult. Uh, secondly, once you're in system settings, you can change... Uh, the, the system settings has been completely rewritten for GNOME 3, and uh, the categories are very consolidated, they're very toned down. Uh, it's very easy to get to what you want to get to. So background, for instance, uh, you just come in here, click background, and, uh, and it'll load up all the wallpapers that you have. Quick side note, they have included some very beautiful wallpapers with Fedora 15, so I do give them a major thumbs up for that, as in the past they have slacked in the looks department. But I'm going to go outright and say it right now, uh, GNOME 3 uh, with GNOME Shell and their wallpapers are absolutely gorgeous. And that's really all I need to say about that. If, uh, if you don't think that, uh, that GNOME 3 is your cup of tea, then that's just fine, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a very modern desktop experience. It looks absolutely stunning, and uh, they've done a great job in making it look nice, making it look presentable to the average user. Having said that, uh, GNOME 3 is not really for the average user at this point. Uh, definitely one of those situations where it's made by software developers for near yeah, nerds, more or less, but I can see this really gaining traction uh, once, uh, once people are getting more and more accustomed to these tablet type UIs. So anyone who spent any sort of time on an iPad or something like that is going to really click with, in with this interface uh, straight away. Uh, also a quick side mention, the power management apparently has had some uh, rework on the back end. So they've, apparently they've done some major work for the, uh, for the power management for Fedora 15, so that is always nice to see. And I'm glad that they've worked that in, as power management is something that is constantly uh, a problem under Linux, in, in my opinion anyway. Uh, networking is uh, very easy as well. It's uh, very simple to configure your own network. Uh, there's no real issues there whatsoever. If you have wireless, that will also come up. Uh, region and languages, no worries. Uh, all your messaging and VoIP accounts you can configure through here as well. Uh, lots of different options in here that... Uh, Quite honestly, this is much neater and much cleaner than uh, the KDE system settings, and you can see we've even got our search bar here that we can use. Uh, so honestly, that, uh, that is quite a nice uh, addition. A good rewrite, uh, they've done a nice job with that. Uh, also, uh, as far as expandability goes, GNOME 3 uh, is famous now for its extensions. Extensions are basically, uh, basically to do with JavaScript. Now, the entire GNOME, GNOME shell environment uh, not GTK3, just GNOME Shell is written in JavaScript. Therefore, it is highly customizable and highly adaptable. Uh, this means that you can change pretty much anything about the uh, about the desktop and uh, and about the way it looks. And many people already have. Uh, if you take the time to uh, do a quick Google search for uh, GNOME 3 extensions, you're going to come up with all sorts of stuff that people have already written. Uh, even considering that uh, Fedora has only been on the ground now for Oh, about uh, a day or so. So they're really getting behind the customization of GNOME 3 and that's to me that is very attractive uh, as uh, Unity is extremely locked down. At this point they are working on it as I've said before. 
So uh, in reality, I think GNOME 3 is definitely uh, is definitely a worthwhile future. They've really done a nice job in uh, in integrating everything into the desktop. Uh, they've really made it look very modern, very polished, very nice. They spent a lot of time developing it, and it shows. Uh, everything, all the small details that you generally gloss over are there. Um, this is very touch-enabled. You can see the switches here uh, under accessibility are very uh, touch touchscreen oriented, if you know what I mean. Uh, this desktop environment has really been developed from the ground up for uh, all sorts of users. Um, again, it's not like any desktop experience that you've ever seen before, so adoption rates are going to be kind of slow. But uh, having said that, I think the people that do uh, take the time to learn this desktop environment and get used to it, uh, I think they're going to be better off in the long run. Uh, this is definitely the direction that uh, desktop Linux is headed, uh, whether people like it or not. But uh, I'd say when GNOME 2.x comes to the end of life, uh, I think most uh, distributions are going to be happy to adopt GTK3, even as a widget set, uh, not necessarily GNOME Shell, as, uh, as that is also quite a major part of this distribution. And honestly, if you don't have the, um, if you don't have the graphic capabilities, of uh, of gnome of the gnome shell, you will drop back to the uh, to the uh, gnome fallback mode, and you can see there even the little uh, details like the login logout is uh, very polished. It's just nice translucency, nice fade. So you can see here that this is just the fallback mode, which is much like the gnome 2.x experience. Uh, and again, even this looks quite polished in itself, uh, and you've just got your classic applications and places menu up here. So. Uh, in all honesty, all hope is not lost for those who want a traditional desktop layout. Uh, they have catered for that as well, and they've catered quite aptly. Uh, Unity, on the other hand, uh, although you can, of course, use the classic Ubuntu mode, that is still based on GNOME 2.x, so it won't be long before that is phased out and that is no longer an option. Having said that, they do have GTK3 and the, ca and the capability that you can see here to run a GNOME 2.x type experience. Uh, so, also uh, a note on Fedora as a uh, as a distribution. As far as their package management is concerned, of course, you have uh, RPM and you have Yum on the command line. And uh, honestly, uh, Yum is a very modern uh, package manager. It does it does an admirable job with uh, dependency resolution, and it's got quite a reasonable speed and it's uh, you know respectable as far as package management is concerned. Uh, I didn't have any dependency resolution whatsoever as far as getting it installed on VirtualBox went. Uh, it really wasn't an issue. I installed the guest editions in VirtualBox 4.0.8 and, uh, and it had a few recommendations for the packages I should download. Downloaded, installed everything fine. Proxy support was there. Uh, on my native install, on my native hardware, uh, hardware support was out of the box. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Uh, proxies worked just fine, and uh, and sound and and graphics and all that fun stuff worked just dandy. So compatibility is definitely there for those who need it. Um, so yes, Fedora has a very large install base. Uh, they do a very good job with their distribution, and uh, this is definitely the first uh, Fedora distribution that I've actually looked into, as uh, as it is uh, something a lot more interesting than what has been offered in the past. Uh, so good job on the Fedora team for getting this out there and getting people using it. Uh, it's going to be definitely interesting to see what the adoption rates for uh, for GNOME 3 are and, uh, you know, indeed the direction of uh, the Linux desktop of the future. Fedora has definitely proven its reputation uh, to provide an innovative, uh, customizable, user-friendly, but somewhat uh, power-user-directed distribution.